Good afternoon, Sunrise Kids. Here's Mr. Peter, Miss Kathy. We would have been teaching you today. We really miss doing that. Um, but we're going to bring you today's lesson in your homes as we're all sheltering in place and being safe. So today's lesson is all about not being afraid. Mr. Peter, could you read the Bible verse, the memory verse for us? Yes, I can. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. And that is from Psalm 56. So when you think about scary things, what do you think of? Do you think of scary movies, scary stories? What do you think of, Mr. Peter? Zombies? Maybe zombies even. But things that they scare you for a little bit when you're watching it, but they're maybe not a real situation that's coming into your life right now. And what is happening in the world all around us today could make us very afraid because it's a brand new thing that none of us have ever gone through before. And sometimes, Mr. Peter, do you like new challenges sometimes? No, I don't like challenges at all. It's too afraid, too scary. Oh, all right, stop too it. Too scary. No, you just got to keep rolling with oh, it, we honey. we can. Yes, we can. We're rolling. So, I know that he doesn't like things to change. I don't like change. You I like things like to change. stay the same. Right. But we're all in a new and challenging situation right now. So in this lesson that I'm going to, the story I'm going to read to you today, it's about a, a character in the Old Testament. You all know Moses. And it's about a challenge that God gave to him that was very new and very challenging. And he did not want to accept the challenge. He just was not ready for it. So I am going to read you the story and then we'll talk about it afterwards. It's called God Calls Moses. So many years passed while Moses cared for the flocks of Jethro, his father-in-law. One day, the sheep and goats were cropping the grass on the lower slopes of Mount Sinai. Moses looked up and saw a bush that seemed to be on fire. He watched anxiously in case the fire should spread through the dry desert land. But although the fire glowed bright, Mr. Peter, what happened to the bush? It was burning. But was it burning up? No, it wasn't. It wasn't being consumed, Miss Kathy. Here we go. Curious, Moses went nearer to look more closely. Then he heard a voice coming from the heart of the fire. Moses knew at once that it was God's voice. Moses. Moses. Take off your shoes, Moses, God said, for this is holy ground. Moses obeyed, then waited quietly. His heart beat fast and he covered his face with a cloak. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God said. I have heard the groans and cries of my people who are slaves in Egypt, and I am going to rescue them. You, Moses, are going to lead them out of Egypt and into the land that I promised to give to the descendants of Abraham. Not me, God, Moses begged hastily. Please don't send me as their leader. I'm nobody. I could not do it. But I will be with you, God promised. I will help you and you will succeed. You will lead my people to this very mountain to worship me here. Moses still did not want to go back to Egypt. He went on making excuses, but God had an answer for every single one. He told Moses that his brother Aaron would, could go with him and do all the talking for him. Take your stick with you, God ordered. You will use it to do my wonderful things that will prove to my people and to the king of Egypt that I am the one true God, more powerful than the king and the gods he worships. Reluctantly, Moses obeyed God. He took his wife and his two sons and stick in hand, set off for the land of Egypt. So even though Moses was afraid, he ended up obeying God. See, he was just a shepherd at this point. He'd been a shepherd for 40 years, living in the wilderness with his family. He was content. He was happy. He had no ambition, no desire to do anything than be a shepherd. Life was pretty comfortable. And then when he saw that burning bush, though, and it was different, God spoke to Moses through the bush and God told Moses to do something new. You see, Moses wasn't just an ordinary shepherd. He had been a Hebrew, a Jew, 
who was raised in the palace of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And so he knew the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh knew him. And God knew that he was just the right person. He had the unique ability and he was qualified to lead God's people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses was just like any of us who don't want to face a new challenge. He was afraid. He didn't want to go and lead the life he knew. But God has a plan, had a plan for Moses and he wanted to do great things through him. If Moses didn't go, he would not only miss out on something new, but on something amazing. So when we talk about Moses, we usually think of not this story, but we think of him leading the Israelites in their 40 years of wandering in the desert and him parting the Red Sea and the other miracles that he did. Right, Mr. Peter? Mm -hmm. And what else do we think of him doing? Going up on the mountain and what did God give him? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. And we think of all those wonderful, amazing things that Moses did, but we never think about the part where he was actually afraid at the beginning. And it took God telling him, you can do it through my strength that I will give you. I will be with you. He was scared. He didn't want to take up that challenge. But God persuaded Moses to have the courage that God would give him. And then he became a great hero. So we all feel like Moses from time to time. We have big changes that we might have to face. No one wants to move or leave his friends behind. If you have to go to a new school, even having a new teacher at the beginning of the year um, might be a little scary for you. And if we go are going to church, sometimes we have to have a new pastor. And sometimes we don't like that. We don't want that change. And we get a little nervous when anything changes. There's a lot of change going on right now. Some of you are not in school. We don't know when you will go back to school. Some of your parents might be working from home or they might not be working at all right now. We as Christians have a wonderful opportunity to show people that our God is bigger than all of this and that we are trusting in him to get us through. Just like he told Moses, I will take you through this. I will walk you through. I'll walk you through the Red Sea. I will take care of you. And that's where our faith at a time like this, we can show that to our friends when they say, oh, you don't seem very afraid or worried. It's like, well, who is who are we trusting in? Trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. So nothing stays the same except our God. So we don't have to be afraid. We can embrace the new things. We can even welcome the challenges knowing God is going to walk with us through them. So at this time in particular, we have to ask God to give us the courage to face the new things that are coming upon us right now and expect God in all of this to still do very exciting things. I'm going to finish with a short prayer that will help us to focus on who God is and what he wants us to do at this time. Dear God, help us to not be afraid when you ask us to try new things or go through new experiences and challenges. Give us courage and make us ready when you send new things our way and help us to trust you with everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We love you. We miss you. Bye, guys. And hopefully we'll see you soon and actually be able to give you a hug. Bye.